Hello, we are Dad and the Rock, and this is the the Halo F show. <laughs> <laughs> you start with such a bad joke and it trip you way up. That is great. <laughs> this is the Halo After Show. We're Dad and the Rock, and uh, yeah, we're here to talk about Halo. My name's Sean, and my name's Chris. And yeah, we'll be joining you each and every Friday night at 10 p.m. right around this time. Look for us on our YouTube channel. Uh, but we'll be uh, discussing Halo on Paramount Plus, uh, which it premiered on a Thursday. I assume it's going to be on Thursdays going forward, right? Yeah, that threw me off. I was like, yeah. I'm so I'm so ready for like Wednesdays for you know Disney Plus or Fridays. Thursday I wasn't <laughs> expecting. Yeah, Thursday was a weird day, but uh, one heck of a premiere. I'll just put it out on Front Street here. Uh, you and I, we're not like huge Halo fans. Like we know of the games. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, I don't think we were, either of us were really Xbox guys when Halo was at, at its peak. Right. Well, I mean, I was, I, and still are terrible at first person, <laughs> person shooter shooters. Games. Yeah. I mean, so I, I never can get into it because I can never enjoy it just because of how bad I was. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I really never got into the games. Well, there's a ton of lore, too. I mean, not only do e each of the games have a pretty big story uh, within them, but there's all kinds of, like, books and, and the, all kinds of things. So this world that we're, you know, taking our first steps in, it's it's pretty large. Um, so, you know, just know that if, you got, if you're going to be watching us, we're probably going to mispronounce names. We're probably going to forget some things or not be aware of a few plot developments that you guys are more than aware of. So... Just bear but with if us. You know for a couple newbies. Yeah, if you know them, hit us with them. Interact with us. Let us know. We'll bring it up and we'll address it. And if you know, if it's something that you think that is pertinent, man, by all means, let us know. Yeah. And we're live. We're live and interactive. Uh, we are here right now. It is currently like 10 02 p.m. on a Friday, <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. If you're watching, uh, comment, uh, ask us questions. We'll bring it up. You'll see a little. Uh, you'll see your comment on the bottom of the screen here, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, so. hit that like and subscribe so we can spread yeah, the word. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> let's, so let's get into this. Yeah, I. Um, so I'm just gonna let you know, like up front, I after I watched this episode, I thought this was actually one of the strongest first episodes of any show that I've ever seen. I'm, I was right there with you. Yeah. I was so pumped. This sub, I was watching it. I could not take my eyes off it. And I think I even texted you and said, dude, by the end of this episode, like the last 15 minutes, I was so engaged. My heart was racing. I didn't yeah. know what to expect to happen. Right. And for that to be a TV show, episode one on a property that I don't know much about, I thought was phenomenal. Yeah. And there had to be a lot of heavy footwork, too, right? Because they're introducing characters. They're introducing the world that they live in. And I think they did a really effective job by the end of this episode and alliances shift like you, you're you're on shaky ground by the end of this episode and you don't don't really know the traje tra trajectory of any of these characters just yet well yeah um, i mean you have dr Halsey, who's actually in control of the spartans right almost seems like she's going against the unsc yeah um so let's just talk about it uh, in piecemeal here bit by bit uh kind of where the uh you know where the episode starts here a, a planet called uh, madrigal yeah. um which reminds me of uh, the family Madrigal and then Canto. <laughs> you thought that too. That's uh, hilarious. Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> we got young kids, <laughs> young We're girls. About Bruno here. This is Halo. <laughs> um, but yeah, that this planet here looks like kind of dry, arid. Um, but a bunch of kind of like uh, colonists that are almost uh, renegades or freedom fighters. They're moisture farmers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty familiar. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, but we start out in like a bar, uh, kind of a group playing cards, kind of joking around. I guess there's a younger one that doesn't know about the, uh, doesn't know about the Spartans. They see some propaganda on the TV, uh, for what is it? UNSC is that the UNSC? Name? Yeah. What is the UNSC that you have derived from this episode? Uh, I pretty much figured they're there. I mean, if we're going to make a comparison to another one of our favorite properties, right. the empire. Yeah. It's kind of like they're, they're the ruling body over like all these planets that you know within this area and they're the ones that basically they're going to provide you know protection and you know all, all the things that you would expect from a government yeah and that that's pretty much what i i've, I've brought from that and then it there's, feels there's a little bit like it feels a little bit like um 
you know, not to bring in, of course, we love Star Wars. If you know our channel, we're big Star Wars geeks, right? Um, it feels a little bit there. Uh, we get the the these renegades or, or like rebels perspective, right? Um, and they don't like this uh, UNSC. They're like the Empire, basically, uh, seems to be. And it seems like they've been at each other. They've been in a long term war for maybe decades. At yeah, this point. with what they consider Marines. They're right. sending the Marines in. They come in within their boundaries and they're ready to fight. Yeah, but uh, it wasn't Marines this time. It was a whole different monster. Yeah, the the TV that they're watching in this bar, it, it has this some kind of doctor. I, I swear I recognize this actor that was on the television, but I couldn't name him offhand. But I know I've seen him in other things. Um, but he's kind of foppish and like British, and you just could tell that he was probably a, a bad guy. Yeah, uh, some, kind of a scientist looking guy. And uh, he starts talking about the well. There's peace talks that are going to develop and Pacific Rim. Uh, Oh, that's right. He was it in Pacific just Rim. Just dawned on me. It was Pacific Rim. He was the other doctor that wasn't. He was that the, wasn't Charlie Day. Yeah, he was the math one. Yeah, and yeah. The other one wanted to actually, you know, get I into the mind of the uh, somewhere. The Kaiju, yeah. Kaiju. Okay, that's there fun. we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's on the TV, um, and um, the the folks around the um, the circle there that are playing the games, they start talking about the UNSC and how they just don't trust them. They yeah. don't trust these peace talks. Um, and right away, th just from the dialogue, you get a sense that this is an ongoing war. Um, it's, it's and nothing it, new. It, it, they're they're yeah. entrenched in where they are. Yeah. Uh, one of the younger guys, he says he's fought Marines, but never Spartans. And this word just through dialogue. Once again, they start talking about how the Spartans are worth a thousand or a hundred Marines. Right. And they don't die and right. things like that. So there's like there's already like an an or about them. They're, yeah. I mean, we keep on going back to our, you know, our star wars stuff with jedi it's it's kind of like it's like that you don't see them all the time yeah as you know of them you know to stay away from them or you know not to mess with them type setups yeah and i know enough about halo to know that master chief is a spartan yeah and i know that i i assume that they're the good guys or at least he's a good guy because he's the one that you play in the games right so um just <laughs> you, you know the just antagonist very often <laughs> right yeah so as, as a halo novice i at least know that much so we're kind of viewing things from a different perspective as we're starting out here um, but, uh, we're introduced to, um, I guess a general or a leader there, uh, by the name of, what was his name? Then? Jin ha. Oh, Jin Ha. Yeah. Um, and he's actually the father of a character called Quan Ha that ends up being kind of a major character in this. And I think perception. she's going to be for a while going yeah, forward. It seems that way. Um, but he comes in and he's worried because she's nowhere to be found. She's off, you know, doing her own thing somewhere. Uh, but it seems to be dangerous out there. Like any, you know, you and I are dads, so yeah. anytime our but kid it would be out, seems the like zone. not out of the normal. When yeah. you know the, his his basically one of his commanders said she's out, you know her. She's wandering yeah. around. Right. No, no big deal. She'll be fine. She's you know she can handle herself. She is. She's off. She's kind of off base though. She's kind of beyond the protection of their walls. She's out with her friends, and they're searching for some kind of plant, um, which she finds. Uh, she she mentioned something that it it not only helps them with like fuel i guess it's what they use to to fuel their ships maybe yeah. uh, but it also has you know drug properties that medicine and yeah, yeah. all good stuff yeah because they once they start eating this thing yeah they they are clearly stoned out of their minds <laughs> yeah luckily she was the last to partake and she didn't because she noticed something in the distance that yeah. she starts walking towards you've seen that gleam and she kind of yeah. you know curiosity got her right and uh well it got <laughs> well it killed the cat and uh didn't quite get her no, you, well, yeah, she starts walking towards like this cave, right? And she sees a cave burst, and then she looks up above the cave, and there's uh, like a spaceship parked there, which she doesn't recognize. She's got this eerie feeling. She starts calling for her friends, and almost immediately, like, you know, they start getting blasted. You just see red mist, like they're yeah. getting decimated. Oh, yeah, no, she finds, I think it was called the Phantom. The Covenant yeah. Phantom was the actual name of the ship, and she's coming back. And yeah, dude, these guns that these, uh, Ooh. These, co these warriors from the Covenant have yeah just vaporize, yeah. vaporize these people. I mean, they're just legs are gone, just boom, and just splat. Once the action started in this episode, now this was all pre credits running. Oh yeah, I mean, so we're talking about what ten minutes, if right. not maybe give or take a little more or less before they open. And I'm like, I'm in, I'm yeah. there, I'm watching this happen. They're storming, you know. Jen basically pops the red smoke. Yeah, and that tells everyone back there that typically it's Marines and they're preparing for a fight. 
she finds her way back to the actual, you know, compound and they're bunkered down. Dad tells her, I guess there's a plan. She's the one that's supposed to keep the kids, kids safe. Yeah. So she's like, you know, go do this. Go, go do your part. So she goes and does that. And we see these covenant or bust through this gate. And if they don't look intimidating for a TV show, right? They looked phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yeah, the effects were really done well, I thought. Um, and what a way to introduce uh, kind of who our antagonists are going to be and the, the heroes introducing the Spartans, too, because it's yeah. like the Covenant comes in and they just decimate these, you know, human people that basically are just wearing like tunics and, you know, they have machine guns and stuff like nothing that's going to be able to stop these these this Covenant that's coming in. They just wreck shop. I mean, they break down the, the barrier walls like it's nothing. Yeah. And uh, people are just dying left and, and right. And they're just mercilessly killing. There's oh, like, yeah. No, and they're no like, yeah, they're it. hunting them down. Like, they're they're there to destroy all of them. Um, uh, Quan Ha, like, basi- barely gets by. Like, all, all her friends are gone. She yeah. runs back um, to where her dad is located and everybody else be, be on, inside these walls. And um, she runs into the old man that she was playing cards with or was playing cards earlier. And he says something along the lines of... Um, uh, oh, I, you know, I didn't believe it. I thought this was just, you know, you want to see propaganda. Propaganda of it, yeah. Yeah, he thought, like, this covenant was just something that was like a ghost story being told to, I guess, distract from the war that they were in. Um, but no, we're seeing firsthand, like, this war, whatever war they were used to is changing now. It's going yeah, no, to happen. No, yeah, there, it wasn't just what they were being told. Now yeah. they're seeing it firsthand. But on top of all that, it look up, another ship's coming in. Yeah. And it's it's Master Chief. In the Spartans, <laughs> I mean, when he that is that was a shot when he f- jumps out and he lands and he looks up. That was you know that was the money shot. That that was a shot you know that they were looking for right out the gate. Yeah, and they go right at him, and then they take him out. They take these these Covenant warriors out with no issue, really. Yeah, it was so effective because you saw how strong and how capable these, these covenant were. And it seemed like they were unstoppable. And then they just up the level to see how good these Spartans are. And then yeah. they seem unstoppable, just taking out the, the, the covenant. So, yeah. And you could tell that the Spartans were used to fighting these covenant. I mean, they just had every move like between the melee and between the gun play. Yeah. Like they knew exactly what to do in each moment to take down each one of these covenant. They knew their weaknesses. They know, you know what? Yeah. Now there was one thing that got me. Master Chief picks up that Gatling gun. Right. And is firing it when it kills him. Uh, Jin Ha was firing that same Gatling gun when they busted through the door and nothing happened to him. Right. That was, that's my one nitpick of that scene. Why yeah. did it matter now that Master Chief is holding this gun and it killed him? Why didn't the same effect happen when, you know, Jin Ha was actually firing it at him? That's fair. At least, I mean, maybe I'm thinking that maybe their like interpersonal shielding that they had had worn down because they had been fighting a lot by that point. Uh, because that was towards the end of the fight when Master Chief actually pulled. Yeah, that was yeah, that was pretty because uh, one of the I'm not sure who it was. Uh, I don't know if it was Riz or Ka- needed cover and they were stuck. Yeah, yeah. And he pulled out. He's saying he, he threw his weapon aside, picked up the Gatling gun, and was walking with it, which was another awesome shot. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. Um, so basically this entire town of these, uh, these rebels are wiped out except for, for Quan Ha. I mean, she's the only living one. She sees her dad die right in front of her, gets that, that cool halo energy blade goes right through him. Oh um, yeah, dude. That was, dude, those weapons are awesome. Yeah. Everything about these weapons are awesome awesome the way they look the way they kill the way like the level of design over this video game that spanned you know deck i mean generations of consoles right yeah yes um i mean between the it just the places the armor the vehicles the the weaponry the actual enemies they fight i mean everything has such a great unique design to it um that we get to experience you know for the first time basically in live action here which is very very cool um but yeah they all the all the townspeople are wiped out except for Quan Ha. They just leave. They like they recognize that she is the only survivor. And well, he first just... he says, you know, 100 and 120 dead. Right. Uh no survivors, 20 covenant elite soldiers. That's what they're called. I think they're elite soldiers they called them. Yeah. Uh, elite soldiers killed. Then he's like, "Oh no, correction. 
one survivor, juvenile right. female. Yeah. And then he just leaves. And she's like, you can't just leave. And they just, they just keep going. I mean, it's I mean, they, they they it's almost like they were hunting for something. Once they found them, there had to have been something within the vicinity or were, their ship or something. Unless they found it when they scanned when they were coming in. Yeah. Um, but they they basically you could tell that they have another destination here. This was just like step one. Because all of the Spartans, they hightail it to this cave that Quan Ha had found earlier in the uh, yeah. in the episode. Um, and uh, they reach it, and Quan Ha is just in a daze, like kind of stumbling, walking behind them to try to catch up to them. I, well, I think she was more in the... I don't think she knew where they went. Right. I think she was still... She was in the mindset of, I know where there's a ship. Yeah. And I'm going to try to get to that ship so now I can get off this rock she called it earlier in the episode yeah which as far as a character piece she wanted to get off this rock from the get-go before they yeah. were attacked now it's like there's nothing left for her here and yeah she's, no he's got it if she wants to survive that's yeah there you guys if you're watching us now uh if you're liking what you're seeing if you want to hear a couple noobs talk about some halo uh <laughs> go ahead and hit that like button hit that subscribe button we are like we said in the beginning we're fully interactive so just let us know your thoughts and uh, we may bring it up on the screen here and address it, you know, live on the show. If you're watching live. Uh, Master Chief, he walks in with the other Spartans and immediately he, he kind of scans the inside of this cave and he finds some sort of like rock formation or stone formation that, uh, you know, it looks like the, the covenant. They were researching this cave. Something was going on here. Yeah. Um, and they've been there for a while. It looks like yeah. he said this wasn't natural. It was something that they were cutting into with plasma torches. Yeah. So it's something that they formed and who knows how long they've had to have been there for a while. And this, you know, outpost just never had any idea. Master Chief, he finds this artifact that's stuck in the wall. He touches it and he starts to get flashes. I got flashes of Mass Effect <laughs> when this happened. Uh, that's the video game series that you and I are more yes. aware of. Uh, but same thing happened to uh, Commander Shepard when he touched that uh, that obelisk in the first Mass Effect. He just yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, Master Chief seems to get visions of his own childhood, maybe. Or at least yeah, some, th somebody's childhood. That's exactly what it is. I mean, get forward a little bit to find out that he's having memories. Yeah. Like, he doesn't know their memories, but he's seeing a dog. He's seeing a family. Right. He's seeing all these things, that I guess, were his life before he became, you know, a Spartan. And they like somehow they were able to basically lock all those memories up, and the and this artifact is basically unlocking all them on him. Yeah. So a great opening to a first episode here at Madrigal. We got introduced to a lot of different characters. Most of them are wiped out by this point, but we are left with um, Master Chief and the other Spartans. Something unique and different has just happened to Master Chief. We don't know yet. It's kind of a mystery. Um, and from here we move on to, uh, planet reach. Is this, is reach the name of the planet? Yeah. Reach is the planet. And that's where the fleet com is ac actually, uh, located. Okay. But then it's, it's basically the headquarters of the UNSC as well. I see. Okay. So it's like, uh, kind of the Coruscant of, <laughs> of I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep drawing comparisons just so I can like grab We're, we're going to, yeah, right? we're going to do our best, to. Uh, Connect the dots in our heads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, then please correct me in the comments. But uh, oh, if we're, we're wrong, they're going to let us know. I've got no concern yeah, about please that. Please do. Yeah. It helps <laughs> the channel out, honestly. If you can comment for us, like, subscribe, it, it uh, helps push us out into the uh, YouTube algorithm. Um, but yeah, so we're introduced to a Dr. Catherine Halsey, um, who I have kind of glommed from this episode, but just even knowing a little bit about Halo, I think she's a character that's referred to as mom in the video games. Uh, but she seems to be a scientist that was kind of the head, the lead scientist to develop the whole Spartan program. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much the impression I got yeah. out of all this because they, they basically take orders directly from her. Right. It's like, I don't think anyone else has the ability to give, give them orders. Yeah. Um, she's reviewing, basically she's reviewing the, the, the video footage from Master Chief's hel helmet when he uh, uh, touched that uh, artifact in the cave and something's up with that because she's it kind of freaks her out a bit. She, she doesn't know what to do with that information just yet. Well, yeah. When then you also have you know the admiral walk in, Admiral uh, uh, Periskai or something like that. I'm not, I'm not pronouncing that right. So yeah. But uh, when she walks in, she hides it immediately. Oh yeah. She's like she, does. she didn't want her to see that that you know that information what's going on, and she kind of she held on to it. She held it close to her vest. Yeah. Uh, for a while. 
it seems like Halsey is uh, a little bit secretive to, for a few things. <laughs> it seems like she hides uh, a few things from the Admiral here. Because there's that whole other project, that whole other room, which I think is some sort of cloning project. I think it's something that eventually becomes Cortana. Yeah. Um, and we're kind of briefly introduced to it uh, here. But yeah, that's another thing that she's keeping from the Admiral. Well, but she says, that, you know, I keep on giving you lead. Don't hang me. Don't hang me with it. Right. Apparently, so, apparently she's giving her a lot of rope yeah to, to do what she needs to do because i mean i guess the heat is starting to get turned up when it comes to funding for the you know for the uh for the projects she's working on right and if they find a reason to cut the you know cut the funding I mean, well, that's that was the main reason she came in she's like you know what 120 you know dead civilians is not good it's not, not good easy look. for me yeah not a good look not easy right. for me to sell that you know we're we're out there trying to save people uh, from Reach, we then go to a, a place called High Charity, which I guess is like the HQ for the Covenant, right? Is that yeah? And it said basically understand? they have no idea where it's at. It looks like a big jellyfish. That yeah, was the first thing location. I thought. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, um, and we see kind of this like priest looking guy. Like he, I mean, he's definitely alien, but he's like decked out in this kind of like priest wardrobe. Kind of looks to be some kind of a wizard or religious figure. Uh, for the covenant here he's just like floating around in the hallways and he goes to a room where we find a human girl which i wouldn't suspect like i've seen the trailer so i know there is a, a human woman kind of uh, working with the covenant so this wasn't like a total surprise but the way she's introduced here is a surprise it's so, yeah well let's kind of watch this real quick and see what's going on <laughs> Uzo Matsahajanati Bajaga Kwe Jan Domo Bukumukaska Sik in a trip to Bamurio Kakran Bamos Chamusiko Jag. I thought this scene was interesting for a couple reasons. Like, I know just seeing in the trailers, I spooled a little bit. She's definitely on the side of the bad guys, right? The, she's on the side of the Covenant. She comes in and she wrecks shop and uh, somewhere along somewhere in this series. So she's definitely considered an enemy. And I think she was actually created for this show, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but as far as a character piece, there's something about the way that she holds on to this human book, you know, it, like a children's fairy tales, yeah. uh, either something sentimental from her own family or it's like the only scrap of humanity that she has left to hold on to. Cause she's definitely not just holding on to it to know her enemy or whatever. Yeah. No, there, there's more there. Yeah. How did she get there? Was she taken? Was she wiped like the Spartans were right? Like what, what is going on? It was, is she supposed to be the response to the Spartans? Like did they find her and found out that she was as, you know, I don't know, talented or skilled or gifted right. as Master Chief, because apparently only other person that was able to activate this artifact was her. Right. So now we have two characters in the show that can activate this artifact. And now she wants to know what's going on. Yeah. And she seems to be speaking from a place of power because she essentially demands that they bring Master Chief to her so she can talk to him directly. Well, it wasn't Master Chief. It was the uh, the other soldier that seen Master Chief activate it. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. She wanted to talk to that soldier, that elite soldier, so she can hear from him firsthand right. what actually took place. Um, but yeah, that is interesting. So uh, right away, we have a connection between the bad guys, uh, direct connection to Master Chief. Something's going on with the pair of them, and uh, you know, the mystery. We'll we'll find out. And so this episode does a good job as far as like layering the mystery, just giving us little bits and pieces throughout the episode uh, that we can hang on to. Which is Scattered good. with a lot. Yeah, a lot of action, <laughs> right? Yeah, they they balance the mystery and plot with the action quite well. Um, so back on the Spartan ship, uh, Quan wakes up. She's in a locked room. I'm, I assume if I were to put myself in her shoes, I would be pretty thankful that I'm not, you know, waking up in desert sand by myself. <laughs> yeah, surrounded by all the, everybody I know, you know, well, dead two around things. me. So then you may also think you're waking up in a prison. True. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I I mean, six of one, half a dozen of the other. Right? <laughs> She's still breathing, at least. Yeah, yeah pretty much. 
Um, but uh, she wakes up and she sees Master Chief and uh, another character we get introduced with who was mentioned by Halsey earlier in the episode of Miranda Keys. Yeah, um, because she actually she's the one that is responsible for alien technology. Yeah, I think, I think if I remember so. right. Yeah. And she's also Halsey's daughter. Did you catch that? Well, yeah, well, we got that a little later because it was an, inter- yeah. it was an interaction between uh, uh, Key Miranda and her dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that, that's when that information leaked out. Yeah, that's a, that seems a little bit later. But as far as this introduction to her character, she's basically in hologram form um, on the ship talking to Quan. And she's trying to convince her basically to like, hey, you've seen this covenant firsthand now. You know it's not propaganda or lies that we're spewing out there. Um, it would go a long way if you were to pump the message out to the other kind of like rebel communities like, hey, this is real. This is what happened. And, you know, let's join the real fight, which, you know, sounds good. But she's like, come on. Yeah. I just lost my dad. Right. My dad, who's been fighting you his whole life. Right. Why do you think I'm going to turn around and now help you? And yeah, it was funny. She's like, no, no, it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I think it is. It just certainly helps the the UNSC, right, to get their message across. But then at the same time, I understand that she would be hesitant because she's just spent well, probably her entire life fighting against this group. And for now, in one day, you can't expect her to just shift. Oh, yeah, it's not going to flip in one day. There's absolutely no way. But uh, right. this is the interaction. And I thought this whole interaction was phenomenal. Yeah. What if I say the UNSC sent a bunch of Spartans to attack us? That's not true. If they killed over a hundred innocent people, children, and then, and then you kidnapped me to force me to say it was all the aliens. Oh, the entire encounter was recorded. You people can make video look like anything. We've seen your Spartan propaganda broadcasts. Dude, Not I well love that. I, I love how she called him out. Like, you know, I've seen your broadcast. I, I know what you can do with video. You can yeah. make anything look like anything. Right. Um, I immediately was frightened for her because I, as I'm watching the episode, I kind of called it to myself. I'm like, look, right now you're the lone survivor and you're an asset um, to this UNSC group. And if you want to stay alive, honestly, you need to work. You need to like be a little bit more workable. You know what I mean? A little yeah, bit a little more, more diplomatic, <laughs> right? You know, um, because later in the episode, we we do find out that like, hey, if, if she's not going to help us, she's expendable. Oh yeah, easily. Oh, yeah. and then yeah, and Miranda was irritated about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, I think are we getting a little ahead of ourselves? There, yeah, or? a little bit, just because I know what happens <laughs> in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, that's exactly what I was fearful of, though. As she had that severe response back to Miranda, it was like just like you know, slow your roll a little bit. I know you're upset, but do geez. you think Miranda's going to have a bigger part in the show as well? I think so. Yeah, I think that unit, that three unit, her dad, her mom, Halsey, and her, pro- will probably get that family dynamic a little bit throughout the a show. A little bit more. Yeah um this encounter was recorded of course uh which is eventually what uh you know kind of helps them the unsc kind of push that decision along to to execute and that'll come back to haunt her later in the show um let's see doctor looking at master chief spotters but oh that's right so like uh dr halsey back in her office they're looking at like this diagnostic um this hologram of master chief's uh yeah like like a scan he lights his... up like a christmas tree yeah, like a central nervous system. Like they're seeing the bit different parts. They were going back and looking at his vitals when he touched that artifact. And when he did, like, yeah, like you, like you said, he lit up like a Christmas tree. Like something activated inside of him. Yeah. Well, she even reaches out to him. And she's like, how you feeling? Everything okay? And right. he's like, I'm seeing things. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've got, I'm seeing, you know, a family. I'm seeing, you know, all these different things he's actually explaining to her. And... The minute it's said, the guy that's standing in the room with Halsey is like in a com- in complete shock. He's like, he can't believe what he's hearing. Like, yeah, I didn't know. Was... Well, I was just going to say this this assistant to Halsey. I think there's going to be friction between these two at some point because he he says yes, ma'am and stuff. And he seems to be working with her, but he seems to be a little bit more freaked out by the actions and the, and the things going around him than than she is. 
<laughs> I don't know. I just got these vibes from him. Like there's going to be something where he's going to end up like. I've got her. a feeling Halsey's going to be off reach. Yeah. At a certain point, she's going to be off planet because right. she's going to be working directly with the Spartans and the Spartans. I don't feel like are going to be working with the UNSC anymore. I think once that they realize that something is going on with Master Chief, their loyalty is to her and him. Right. Rather than to the UNSC. And I think that's going to be, that may be a side, like a um, side issue outside of the, the main covenant being the problem. Yeah. I see that conflict being there as well. Right. Um, this is the point where we go back to reach and we have the conversation with Miranda and her dad. We find out that Halsey is uh, her mother. And uh, this is when it comes out that like her dad tells her like, Hey, the UNSC has d decided to basically uh, execute this girl and they put it over the article that, 72. Yeah. Article 70, 72 that she's basically become more of a liability than anything. So it's easier just to sweep her under the rug and say that she died from her injuries sustained on planet. And uh, that's it. And Miranda's just like very. Oh, she, she hit just talked to this girl. She hit him, hit him with one of the best lines of the show. Yeah. What's the point of saving humanity if we're going to give up our own? Yeah, and he's he's insistent. You can tell the war's broken him. He's he's older, and he basically retorts saying, you know, uh, hard choice for good results, which is just like you know ju ends justify the means and yeah. Um, and she wasn't buying it. No, not she at didn't all. buy it at all. Yeah, which um, yeah, it's gonna be really it's gonna be interesting. I, I like I said okay. I don't I don't know much about this any of the Halo stuff, right? But that interaction between her and her dad, who seem close at this point, yes, yes, and her mom and her are polar opposite. I mean, they, they seem very distant. Very Even distant though the apart. the dad says you guys are more alike than you think, uh, they seem to be at each other's uh, ends. I think that comment that she made. And his retort is showing us there's going to be a split between those two. And she is actually going to align more with Halsey down the line. Mm, Definitely with what she found out. Yeah. That would be good character play, good storytelling. I think you, you might be onto something there. That would be good. Um, so we go back to the Spartan ship. Um, earlier in that episode, I, I, I don't think we mentioned, but like when they left uh, Madrigal, Master Chief had the other three Spartans go ahead of them, basically. Yeah, um, broke protocol. Think, yeah, the, which broke protocol, which one of them did mention. Um, so I don't know if that's going to come back. Um, but essentially, you know, they do wind up listening to Master Chief, taking his direct Because it was an order. Yeah, it was an order. And, and they know Master, how to follow orders, yeah. Master Chief is on... The, so Master Chief is on the ship heading back to Reach with Quan. And it's just those two on the ship. Like, they're the only ones on the ship currently um and um they have a little bit of dialogue together she asked him like why a spartan would save her um and we get another bit of information it turns out she knows master chief yeah she's seen him before because he's killed her mother so there, there's is, a like, history that kind of blew my mind honestly like that little nugget of information i was like wow that sucks <laughs> and the fact that she's sitting there and just looking at him yeah just eating, she i mean she's hardened She's not easily shakable. Yeah. So the fact that she's sitting there, and he, he even hits her with one of the worst dad jokes ever. He eats nuts, bolts, and microchips. Yeah, he was trying to get along with her. Like, they've had a, both had a hard day, right? They were just trying to move on and get a little levity in the situation. Yep. But you have to imagine that, like, this girl grew up hating this particular Spartan, Master Chief. Yeah. I mean, the, the Spartan that killed her mother. And then today's events, not only were they crazy, but that very Spartan is the one that saves her life. That very Spartan is the one that's sitting across a table from her. I know. And giving her just like little polite jokes. And it's like, I can't imagine just like what she's even thinking. Yeah. Um, the fact that she can sit there and eat and not be trying to be at his throat. <laughs> right. Is uh is, 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 is crazy to me. Yeah, and she starts to show some sympathy because, she, I mean, what she, can she do at this point? I mean, she's kind of a captive. Um, she's not going to kill him like he's surrounded in that Mjolnir armor, right? There's no yeah through that. So she just kind of talks with him. Um, she's like, you got anything to eat? Um, and they uh, she, there was a point of dialogue where um, he says something about, you know, he doesn't question his orders. Um, 
And uh, she was like, well, why is that a bad thing? Like, why is questioning things a bad thing? Um, yeah, which, well, if you start, then you question everything. His, his, his response was. Yeah, but you can tell between this artifact that did something to him implanted, you know, or implanted or un unleashed these memories of his. I think it unlocked some things in there that were, were supposed to be permanently locked. And having these conversations with Quan, just thinking about things in a bit of a different way. Master Chief's having a little bit of a crisis of conscience here on this. He's ship. having a very bad day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's getting shook up a little bit, um, which is inter interesting way to introduce us to a character, a uh, character that's been you can tell he's probably been by the books this entire time. Yeah, um, just following directives, following orders. And then this one day is just like completely um, kind of taking the ground underneath his feet, which is interesting to, to start. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you're still watching us or you haven't watched just, you know, to this point. Or, or just joining us or watching us recorded. However, you guys are, in, you know, you know, taking in our Halo After Show here. Uh, be sure to go ahead and like, subscribe, uh, drop comments. If you watch live, we, we're, we're live every Friday night at 10 o'clock here to do this Halo After Show. Please join us. We love the comments. We love the interaction. Uh, while you hear two guys that have no connection to the show <laughs> or, or, or the game, I should say, that actually to this point so far are really enjoying the show. So uh, let us know what you guys are thinking as we continue to break this down. Uh, yeah, and if you're watching right now, be sure to leave a comment. What are we getting wrong so far? And uh, what have you guys liked about the show so far? Um, so as Master Chief's having this conversation with Quan, he gets a little uh, message, a little text message in his visor, right? Yeah. His his uh, display to basically execute Quan. He's like, what's your name? She's like, Quan Ha. Huh? And he gets yeah. up and leaves. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he... Um, he essentially he cuts the video feed at that. Yeah, point. no, he's like no business. He immediately knows he's not going to do it, right? And he goes and shuts down the, the actual video feeds and everything in the ship, so they can't see what's going on. Which, which is crazy by itself. Like, why? why see, this is what I'm struggling with a little bit as well. And it's, I guess we got to do a little bit of, like stretch the belief that this artifact had that much of an influence on him. Yeah that now he's going to go ahead and defy orders completely when he never questioned anything, period, to the point where he is disabling the video feed in his ship. Right. Um, I, I took that as he was just buying himself time. <laughs> um, I think just be the simple fact that he is struggling. Um, you could tell, and it's so funny, We, you and I have talked about this while watching The Mandalorian. Um but there's a lot of shows where, you know, you're just looking at a helmet, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't see the actor's face. You can't see their... Expression. And they're fantastic helmets. Oh, the <laughs> Halo helmet is excellent. spot on. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. Um, But just the body language you have to read. And when he when Quan mentions that Master Chief was the one that killed her mother, and she tells him the story of how, like, they were just having a, a meeting or something, and you think she was that dangerous, Um, his shoulders slump, his head it goes down, like... yeah. Master Chief is shook uh, at this point. So I took it as like, maybe he was just cutting the video feed to buy time. Um, and, and if I'm starting to think in like UNSC modes, like maybe you probably don't want video of Master Chief, like just gunning this girl down when, when the information that's going to be out there is that like she succumbed to her injuries from the planet. So I, that's what I was thinking personally. Like it could go either way at some point, like either he's going to follow the orders with the video feed cut off or he's cutting the video feed off to just like, I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't think he was worried about the video feed with her, him killing her. Yeah. Uh, there would have been video. They can easily just kind of get rid of it. Right. Uh, they would probably want video showing that the orders were, you know, executed. Yeah. So yeah, that I didn't think that at all. I thought it was more kind of like what you're saying. He, he, he needed to buy time. Yeah, because right after that happened, he was he was working on something and she comes in with basically with the, the weapon drawn, wanting to yeah. shoot him. And he's like, you can try. It's not going to do nothing. Yeah. And this was a really important scene. Um, well, basically, he decides to cut the video feeds, which makes people at the UNSC like freak out like the Admiral Halsey, um, Halsey's husband, Miranda. They're all like, what's yeah. going on here? Um, and back on the ship. Yeah, you mentioned like she there's no way that she's going to like gun him down with with the armor. So he actually he goes and becomes vulnerable. He removes his helmet, which is a big deal. Yeah. Now, this is where I think a lot of Halo fans uh, they're, they're contentious about. Yeah. It's like 
not only did he remove his helmet, but he removed it in, in episode one. That shook. That, that took me by surprise. I didn't yeah. expect it to see in episode one. Right. But the fact that he did it basically to show Quan that, you know what? I'm on your side here. Yeah. We're, we're, we're kind of in this together right now. And it, it, they gave this, this Spartan, this elite soldier, humanity. Right. And that's what he was reaching out to with Juan. So I thought it was well done. I had no issue with it being taken off. Yeah. And I mean, we see them in uh, a later on that they have to go get suited up. So they don't always have it on anyway. Right. So what's it matter if we see him without it on or if we just see them getting suited up and then we see him after it's on? Yeah, I can see the argument on both sides as far as, you know, big fans of this game series like, um, you know, taking the helmet off would be a big deal. You know, this is the way Mandalorian, right? So, <laughs> um, but at the same time, like this isn't the video game. We're not but supposed the, to like. Uh, but in Mandalorian, in... you you brought it up. It's the way. It's the religion. He's a soldier. He doesn't right. live with his helmet on. Yeah, he has it on when he's during operations. When he's on, you know, on leave, he's John. <laughs> right. And if we're going to get invested in this show, watching this television show, and our main character is underneath a helmet and we can never see his face, like, I think that's going to be an issue. And the reason I bring the Mandalorian up, yeah, the reason I bring the Mandalorian up is because it's so similar. Now, they decided to really use Pablo Hidalgo's, or not Pablo Hidalgo, that's a whole different other guy, uh, but the actor that plays uh, the Mandalorian, they use, he takes his um, helmet off sparingly. Like, it's still a big deal when he does take it off, and they use that as a plot point. Um, but I would much rather see this guy. I don't have to worry. I just don't want to worry about, like, oh, does he have his helmet off or on? Like, I want to see the actor. I want to see, you know, meaty um, scenes of dialogue and him acting between with the other actors. That's what I want to see. I don't mind him having it off. I want him on the majority of the show. I want, I want his interactions. Mm -hmm. I want his interactions to be with the other Spartans. Yeah, that and and they will all be suited up when they're all together. Right. Or I want his interactions with the helmet on, uh, direct conversations with Halsey, or right. if we're gonna see Cortana later, there are the interactions I want to see. So I don't mind him seeing it off. I but I would prefer it to be on the majority of the time. Uh, yeah. So I, I yeah I guess I'm with you there, but uh, I just knew when it happened, like oh this is a big deal. Like Halo fans are either gonna be okay yep. with this or hate this <laughs> <laughs> there was gonna be no in between uh, yeah um so we go back to halsey and they're gearing up because they're freaked out the master chief's coming and the, you don't want a spartan coming down to like wreck shop well right? she's like yeah he's not gonna fire on us yeah but they're taking precautions like he is um they get all the marines lined up um, well first no before all that took place they went ahead and killed the oxygen in the in the actual ship which you're able to do remotely so basically, they, they almost killed Quan right there. And right. then they dropped the oxygen level in his suit down to 40% just to make him unconscious. Right. And then he drops, but he finds the ability to get into one of the panels that has the control, the absmere control in that's the ship. That's right. That's and that's they when they're about ready out. to crap their pants. Yeah, because they were, he could take that as like an attempt to kill him. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> trying to kill to me. Do. Yeah, no, we're, we're, I'm not good with this. And that's when they scramble everybody. Yeah, exactly. it's like everyone get ready. And dude, I was watching it in the scene when all the Marines were grabbing the weapons and running. I thought Starship Troopers move oh, your asses. Yes. I thought for sure, that's what I thought immediately. And it's funny because if you guys watched any of our other stuff, our uh, rewind with Peacemaker, I had a connection to that same movie <laughs> in that one Starship too. <laughs> Troopers, boy, you could you could probably uh, age us uh, pretty quickly with the movie references that we pull up. <laughs> Anybody under the age of 25 isn't bringing up Starship Troopers, I don't think. Yeah, but yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Halsey, she gathers up the other Spartans and she's like, hey, don't basically like, you know, protect John, protect Master Chief. I love this. And, yeah, it's well, it's... yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're walking out and they hear you hear them being given their orders. Yeah, Master Chief has been, you know, infected with something. I can't remember the exact wording. But we got to bring him in. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, I'm superseding the orders you pro were provided. You protect Master Chief. Right. 
if anyone fires on him, you fire on them. And then they quite one of them questioned immediately. Yeah. Even friendlies. And then the other one's like, well, if they fire on Master Chief, they're not friendlies. And, and that and that smile that Halsey gave when he said that. Yeah. Basically said they were all on the same page. Yeah. And the way I took this scene is when they the ship was down and they were placing the actual charges on the ship that get into it. Yeah. All three Spartans pulled their weapon and were aiming at those soldiers that put the actual charges on. Mm. I think if they blew, they were lighting them up. See, that's interesting because it's like I took it as they were pointing at the door of the ship and it was kind of unknown. It was kind of a little um, not quite clear exactly what their final intentions would be because I, I think there was enough of a dissension in the ranks. And we saw earlier in the episode when the one um, the one woman uh, Spartan, I don't know their names yet, uh, kind of questions question Master Chief on uh, the, his directive that he gave her. Um, so I don't know. And because we're so fresh to this, I don't know their dynamic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know if they're completely 100 percent loyal to Master Chief or they'd be more loyal to the UNSC. Um, so I was a little bit more uh, unsure about what they would eventually do. Luckily, I mean, we didn't even have to worry about it because Master Chief got control of the ship and he was able to hightail it out of there. without. Well, he went ahead and he touched the actual artifact again. Yeah. And it gave him more flashbacks. It went ahead and powered the ship. But not only that, it hit the whole planet with like an EMP. It yes. It blacked the whole planet out and it somehow it, it fired them up. All of their computers had to reboot. <laughs> and the, sh- yeah, the ship actually started looking like the cave yes. that they found it in. Like the actual lines they were going through were kind of like a, almost like a microchip type setup. And it, the engines fired up and they took off. Yeah. And um, Master Chief, the, the last line of dialogue in this episode is um, uh, buckle in or uh, buckle up. Uh, which is perfect for to end the first episode because it, it tells the viewer like if you like this you're in for a ride yeah there, there's Navy. more coming <laughs> this is this is going to be something uh, uh yeah i'm going to be interested to in see how this goes forward this was fun i oh, i yeah. watched this episode now twice i was blown away both times i thought that the the writing quality was phenomenal i thought the action was great the storylines left nothing to you know to be concerned about because like you said they were giving you stuff and not giving you stuff the whole way through the length of the show was almost an hour long yeah the biggest drawback to a lot of these streaming shows nowadays is they're only like 30 minutes yeah like 30 35 minutes and you just barely get into it before it's over yeah so when they're giving us a full hour show and that's longer than most shows too i mean we're looking like hbo length time right or it is product it is produced by showtime so that mm. kind of makes sense yeah. There, there wouldn't be you know programmed commercial breaks in there, but uh, I was I was over the moon with this show. I, I could not tell my friends I was working with enough on how much I enjoyed it. Now there are a few Halo heads in there. I don't know if that's the proper term for you guys or not. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> What's your fan group called? I want to know. <laughs> but uh, I was like, you know what? I loved it. But what I'm hearing is it's a different story, mm-hmm. which it can't be a bad thing. It doesn't have to be the same exact story than the things that you're used to already. But I, that's just my thinking out loud. Well, that's what I'm hearing too, is that the producers um, and the creators of the show are essentially saying that this is a different timeline than the Halo universe that Halo fans know from the, the books and the video games. Like they're going to borrow stories from from, from the, that timeline, but essentially it's almost like the MCU versus the comic books or something like that. They're like this is a unique story using the characters and bits and pieces of the plots um but like i'm dude this was a great first episode i'm along for the ride um i loved the characters i mean kwan very interesting character yeah. great introduction to her character um halsey and her dynamic with between her and the, the family Admiral dynamic yeah and the family dynamic mm-hmm. uh miranda and i'm interested to see more from the spartans uh, once they take their helmets off we learn a little bit more about their backstories their relationship with master chief um but then we have the covenant yeah. Like, I want to know more about the covenant. There, there is so much out there. There's so many good things yeah. that are out there. I mean, for a sci-fi show, this is hitting all the marks. Yeah. For for you and I, it is. I'm curious to see as I kind of look through the reviews and some of the reaction on YouTube and stuff throughout the remainder of the week, 
how's this hitting not only kind of the general public, you know, kind of fans like you and I who are kind of newbies to the series, but also like the diehard Halo fans. Like, how is this hitting for them? Uh, be well, hear me out on this here. Like. Uh, this may. Hey, guys, if you're Halo fans, cover yours. <laughs> who cares about the Halo fans? Mm. You know what I mean? The show is going just like any type of Star Wars show or the Marvel MCU. They don't survive on the diehard fans. They survive on the casual fans that don't know what's going on. And if they're willing to tune in and watch, they're probably th- at least three quarters of the viewership. Yeah. Now you're going to make your fan base angry, right? but they're going to tune in just like when me and you don't like a star Wars show or a movie, the, like, the newest three uh, movies, they weren't good. The sequel but, trilogy. Yeah. But you know what? Our butts were in the theaters, right? Th- that's my point with, with me saying that. Yeah. They're going to watch because they love Halo. They love Master Chief. They want to hook us because we don't have a connection to the character. Right. Uh, so far, they're doing a good job, in my opinion. I- I'm hooked. I can't wait for episode two next week uh, on Paramount Plus Thursday. And we will be here next week, next Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, to discuss Halo episode two. Be sure to join us here on a YouTube channel. Um, look us up. We're Dad and Rock. Uh, we just finished up a rewind uh, review of the Peacemaker show, Peacemaker on HBO Max. Uh, spoiler alert, we love that show. Um, uh, we're just having a great uh, couple, uh, uh, great run here watching uh, some good TV. Yeah, we're enjoying uh, sharing our feelings. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, be sure to check us out. Be uh, Look us up on YouTube. It's uh, Dad and Rock. You can see all the information there in the bottom left of the screen. Uh, But yeah, we will come back here next Friday live 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about Halo Season 1, Episode 2. And Halo fans, you know what? We're we're at Dad and Rock on Twitter. Bring the heat. (laughs) 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 Until we see you guys next time. uh, We'll see you next time. See ya.